All right, so we have the third thing here in 9.6 is our special polar graphs. And these are graphs that follow a certain, um, a certain uh, pattern of equations, and you are going to have to know them. So what's that? What? Oh, you're complaining? <laughs> All right, so I know how you feel, understandable. Um, but you still have to know. So uh, notice that if you have a, this is called a limousine. That's a, a C with a little squiggly underneath it, but it's French. So um, yeah, nobody likes French, especially Mr. Tetralt. Um, so, but we're still gonna learn it here in pre-calc anyway. Uh, if you have R equals A plus or minus B cosine theta, like it, and you could also have R equals A plus or minus B sine of theta, then you have these four different shapes. You have either a limousin with an inner loop, you have what's called a cardioid, and that's where your loop comes to a point at your origin. You could have a dimpled limousin, which means you have a, look, kinda looks like a bean here or whatever, with a little dimple, a little uh, indent right here. And then you can also have a convex limousin, which looks close to a circle, but it's not quite. Now notice these are orientated on your horizontal axis, which means that would be an equation with using your cosine. If you're using a sine, then you're going to be using, uh, you're going to have the same graph, but it's just going to be oriented on the vertical axis somewhere. So these are four shapes you need to know here. Uh, a couple more shapes you might want to know are your rose curves. So whenever you have a rose curve, you have these types of equations. R equals A cosine N theta. R equals A cosine N theta here. You also have R equals A sine of N theta and R equals A of sine N theta. Um, now notice these are both sines here and these are both cosines, but when you have them, um, if they're cosine, that means that they have their a pedal on your horizontal axis. If it is a sign, then it has one of your pedals on your vertical axis. Um, it does depend also with the number of pedals you have. And so here you have three, here you have four, here you have five, here you have two. And if you can look at, maybe find a few interesting uh, tidbits about your rose curves. All right, the last thing you're gonna have are called circles and lemniscates. Uh, circles, are when you have just an a cosine theta or just an a sine of theta. Notice once again, if you have a cosine, your circle is on your positive x-axis. Now, if this was, if your theta was over here, then you'd have a circle on your negative x-axis. Here, your sine is on your positive x-axis, so your circle is, sorry, your circle is on your positive y-axis if you have a sine. Um, Lemniscates, gates, we won't really deal a whole lot of these, but they kind of look like um, infinity signs. And if you have a, r squared equals a squared sine of two theta. You get this pretty little shape, where a is the distance from the origin out to the end of one of your loops. And if you have a sine, then that is, it basically goes along this pretty little line of y equals x. And then if you have a cosine, then it is actually has an orientation on your x axis. So those are your different shapes, which you are gonna have to make sure that you memorize. I know, I know, I know, rough life, rough life, feels so bad for you. Um, so let's try example four here where we have to analyze a rose curve. Well, heck, we already know what it is. So if we had to analyze this, we need to know what type of curve it is. Well, we know it's a rose curve, but we need to figure out how many petals it's gonna have. So we're gonna say a blank, Petal rose, petal rose, so I call one word. A blank petal rose curve, so we don't know how many petals it's gonna be yet, or do we? So if we go back and look at our <coughs> uh, wonderful little chart back here, where we have a rose curve, so we have a cosine, and if n is three, then that means, well, how many petals do we have? Well, we have three petals. If you have n is four, an even number, 
then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight petals. So if n is odd, that means that you are going to have that many pe or n petals when n is odd. And then when n is even, you have two times that number. So if you have an even number, multiply it by two, that's how many petals you have. If you have an odd number, that's how many petals you're going to have here. So if we go back over here, and n is right in front of your theta. So if we go back over to our example, you have a three in front of your theta, so this is a three petal rose. So symmetry, um, it's on your cosine, so this would have an orientation on the x, positive x axis. And then your zeros, we're gonna figure out what those are here in a little bit. And we're gonna find those by actually doing our chart. So let's make an r theta chart for our first and our second. So we're gonna have zero, um, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, then we're going to have pi over 2, and then we're going to have, so where do we go next? 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, and a 5 pi over 6. So there's your first and your second quadrant, and then if we do our third and our fourth, we're going to have pi, 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 4, finally got that right for once. 4 pi over 3, then we're going to have your fourth quadrant, which is 3 pi over 2, a 5 pi over 3, 7 pi over 4, and 11 pi over 6. So you have to plug all of these values in, and it's going to be glorious. So if we plug in a 0 for theta, and 0 for theta <coughs> excuse me, means we're going to have 3 times 0 is 0, so cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So this should make sense if we go in the direction of 0, we go out here a distance of 3. So I'm going to go by halves for each of these. So let's go half, 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, 4. So we're going to go out here to 3, put a dot. So there's 1, 0. Um, and then we're going to have a pi over 6. So if you take 3 times pi over 6, that's actually a pi over 2. So pi over cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. So you come back to, in the direction of pi over 6, you go a distance of 0. Pi over 4. 3 times pi over 4 is a 3 pi over 4. Cosine of that of 3 pi over 4 is going to give you a negative radical 2 over 2. So if we take three times a negative radical two over two. I am. Uh, that's going to give us a negative 2.1. So if we go in the direction of pi over four, which would be 45 degrees, we actually need to go negative 2.1. So we actually have to go the opposite direction. So we're going to go half, one, one and a half, two, point one, right? About there. So far, your graph is looking something like this. So you plug a pi over 3 in. 3 times pi over 3 is just a pi. So we're going to have the cosine of pi is negative 1. And we're going to have a 3. Sorry, negative 3. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So you go in the direction of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. But we need to go a negative 3 in that direction. So that's going to be There's negative 2, negative 2 and a half. Here's negative 3. So we get to that point. Then we go to pi over 2. 3 times pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is a 0. 0 times 3 is 0. So in the direction of pi over 2, we're going to go 0. So we have another <coughs> dot back here. Plug a 2 pi over 3 in there. 2 pi over 3 times 3 gives you a 2 pi. Cosine of 2 pi is 1. 1 times 3 is a 3. So you go in the direction of 2 pi over 3, which is 120 degrees. You go a distance of 3. So you go half, 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3. Dot. Plug in 3 pi over 4. That's a 9 pi over 4, which is the same as a pi over 4. Right? If we have a 9 pi over 4 in that coterminal with 
pi over 4. So if we have a cosine of pi over 4, that is going to give us a positive pi over 2. We are sorry, not a positive pi over 2. What am I thinking? Um, let me change this. A positive radical 2 over 2 times 3 gives us a positive 2.1. So in the direction of 3 pi over 4, you go 2.1. So we're going to go half, 1, 1 half, 2.1. There's that. Plug in a 5 pi over 6, that gives us a 5 pi over 3. So the cosine of 5 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3 is actually down here. That gives us a cosine of 5 pi over 3 is a 1 half. So 3 times a half is going to give you a 3 halves, or a 1.5. So in the direction of 5 pi over 6, dun 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 dun, you go 1 half, 1, or half, 1, 1 half. There we go. Now we got to do our other quadrants. So plug in a pi. 3 pi is the same as pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. So if we go in the direction of pi, oh wait, we actually have to go the other way. Over to here. So there's a dot. Plug in a 7 pi over 6. It's a 21 pi over 6. Same thing as a 7 pi over 2. And 7 pi over 2. That's the same thing as a three and a half pi. Or if you go around your circle, there's one pi, two pi, three pi, and a half pi is down here. So you're going to be going in the direction of, this is the same as three halves pi. So if you plug a three halves pi in for, find the cosine of three halves pi, that is a zero times three is zero. So we have another dot back here in the origin. Multiply 5 pi over 4, so you get 15 pi over 4. And you have to remember a lot of coterminal values here. So that goes in there almost four times, but that is a 3 and 3 fourths pi. So if we go 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 3 fourths pi, that's done here at really a 7 pi over 4. <coughs> and you can get that actually by taking just 15 pi over 4 minus a 2 pi, which is 8 pi over 4. So 7 pi over 4 cosine of that is a positive radical 2 over 2. Man, lots of thinking. Glad I know my circle here. Radical 2 over 2, plug that in. You get multiplied by 3, you're going to get a 2.1. So 5 pi over 4, you go in that direction. You get 2.1, which is right here. 4 pi over 3, we already have that, so 4 pi over 3 times 3 is a 4 pi. Cosine of 4 pi is a 1, so you get a 3 here. So 4 pi over 3, direction of 4 pi over 3, that is down here at 240. You go a distance of 3, so we're good there. Plug in 3 pi over 2, you're going to end up, and actually just to save you a little bit of time, you're going to end up and get some uh, symmetry going on here. And we're gonna get a three petaled rose. So if we plug a three pi over two, that's a nine pi over two, which is the same as a, what, pi over two? That looks good. Cause it's a four and a half pi. So at half pi, you have cosine half pi is a zero. So zero times three, back to your origin. Five pi over three, you plug that in, you get a five pi. Cosine of five pi is a one pi, so you get a negative three. So in the direction of five pi over three, which is over at 300, you have a distance of negative three, which is back up here. So you plug that in. Once again, we are repeating values. So you're gonna end up and have to use a little bit of symmetry here. And we're gonna get a graph that goes, here's a petal. There's one. This go is going to go down over here. Oh, that did not turn out so hot. There's that one. And then here is your other pedal. Now you would find these other points if we plugged in other values besides ones we actually know on our circle. So hopefully if you use a little bit of symmetry and you know use your knowledge from before of all these different shapes then we're gonna find your pretty little shape here, our three-petaled rows.